Welcome to Comedy by Indie Drop-In. Each week, we feature an episode from the best independent creators. Hit subscribe for more great comedy content. If you would like to support Indie Drop-In and get these episodes ad-free, check out our Patreon at the bottom of the show notes. Today's episode is from Fancy Free. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to subscribe and follow on social media. Enjoy the show. Begin. Hi guys, it's Joanne. Really quick, before I start today's episode, I wanted to pop in and tell you two things. Number one, when I recorded this interview with Abby, I had not finished reading her first book, The Friend Zone, and I had not started reading her book that's released tomorrow, The Happy Ever After Playlist. So I just wanted to come by and tell you how much I loved The Friend Zone. You guys, I could not get enough of it. It is one of those rare books where the author really made me feel the emotions and the circumstances in the book. I felt like I related to the characters. She tugged at my heartstrings, which I don't know what it is. My heartstrings are kind of hard to tug. I'm a skeptic when it comes to romance in movies and books. A lot of times I just don't buy it. Well, this was the opposite of that. Oh my gosh, you guys. She communicated the angst and the longing and the love and the joy of her characters so beautifully. I like viscerally felt these characters and what they were feeling as I was reading the book. So good. So amazing, Abby. You are incredible. I can't wait for your third book. So I finished The Friend Zone and I received an advanced reader copy or a galley of the Happy Ever After playlist after doing the interview with Abby. Well, you guys, I'm so hooked. Last night, my husband came into our room. I think it was about 2.30 in the morning. And this very unlike me because I usually am like, oh, I'm a sleepy head. I'm going to go to bed. I was still reading. And he was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, it's just so good. I want to keep reading, but I know I need to go to sleep. Not only is the book so far every bit as good as the friend zone, but the characters are familiar. So you start feeling it sooner. And then the playlist on top of that is so incredible. It's just such an enriching experience when reading the book. It's amazing. It's awesome. I do want to mention one thing. Abby's books are not for kids. There is some spicy romance and there is definitely some gritty language. I didn't think any of it was gratuitous. It just felt really organic with with her characters. But I just wanted to warn you in case that is something that you wouldn't like in a book, then this book maybe isn't for you. But I think most people will absolutely love it, eat it up and be sitting on the edge of their seat to read her next one. So that's number one. Number two, my interview with Abby was so good. She was so generous with her time. We talked for over an hour and I just can't cut a lot of what we talked about. She did tell some hysterical stories. We were laughing our heads off. We were crying with laughter. It was so fun. So you are absolutely going to love her funny stories. But also she gives so much wisdom and advice regarding creative outlets. And her life is just so interesting. Later this week, I'm going to publish a bonus episode where we talk in more depth about her bakery and her writing and just some of her life philosophies. And she actually gives me some really amazing advice. So I don't think you want to miss that either. Thank you for coming and listening to the Fancy Free Podcast. I know you're going to love this episode. Enjoy. You are listening to the Fancy Free Podcast, where my girlfriends and I tell our most embarrassing, funny stories so we all feel less alone in our imperfections. And you guys, I think that I am the most excited I've ever been about a guest today. I have with me Abby Jimenez, and you guys will know her as soon as you hear a little bit about her, and and it's just so, so exciting. So Abby is a Food Network champion, a motivational speaker, and a contemporary romance novelist living in Minnesota. She founded Nadia Cakes out of her home kitchen in 2007. The bakery has since gone on to open multiple locations in two states and has won numerous Food Network competitions and amassed an international cult following. Abby has since turned her talents to penning novels. She loves a good book, coffee, doglets, and not leaving the house. So I think Abby and I have a lot in common. Abby, thank you so much for being with me today. Yes, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I have so many questions for you, but I will just start by asking you to fill in the blanks. What did I miss about who you are and what you do? Well, you know, that was a very good summary. Thank you. I have three daughters. I've got four dogs. 
and I have three <laughs> bakeries. So there's some numbers for you there. <laughs> three daughters, four dogs, three bakeries, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> yeah, and a three book deal with Hashtag Book Group. So wow. Okay, well that's good to know. I'm I'm glad I'm not going to be running out of reading material anytime soon. I just started your first book and my family just won't leave me alone. I'm like, I just got to read. I, I, why do you guys keep needing things from me? <laughs> I'm, I'm reading. <laughs> I won't give you any spoilers. You are a woman of many talents. And it all started, I think, at least your public life all started with your bakery. So tell me a little bit about how you started your bakery. Well, like you said in my bio, I, I started my bakeries out of my house and I never went to culinary school. I have no formal training. Actually, I have no formal training in writing. I never went to college. I never went to culinary school. I pretty much self-taught with all the things that I do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I do things that I like and I'm very fortunate the things that I like are things other people like to buy. Yeah. I started out of my house and two years after I started baking cakes out of my house, we opened up our first retail location. And six months after that, we started getting phone calls from TV shows. So actually first we went on Fabulous Cakes on TLC and we did two seasons of that before I went on Food Network and then I won Cupcake Wars. Okay. Our first brick and mortar location actually just had its 10 year anniversary in November. Oh, how exciting. That's awesome. So you have two in Minnesota and one in California. Which one did you open first? We opened California first. That's where I lived. I lived in California for most of my life. And then we wanted to open up another location, but we didn't want to do it in California. It's very expensive out there to have a business. And we wanted to live somewhere where there were seasons. So we put all three of our kids in the car. And we took a cross country trip and we drove through 23 states over the course of five weeks. And we knew we didn't want to live anywhere hot because we already did that. Palmdale is in the high desert. It's 60 miles outside of Los Angeles. It's like 115 in the summer. Oh, yeah. And so we were like, well, we'll drive through the middle and then we'll come back through the top. And if we see any states we like, we'll check it out. And we drove through Minnesota and we're like, gosh, we really like it here. And we Googled it and there was like no cupcake shops in Minnesota. And we spent three days in the Minneapolis suburbs and then went home and packed up our house of eight years, all of our kids, put everything into a moving truck and moved to Minnesota in the winter. We didn't know anybody. We had no friends or family. It was literally like, Minnesota's it. And then we, we moved to Minnesota. Wow. So that's how we ended up here where we are now. And we ended up opening two shops, one in the Minneapolis suburbs and then one in the St. Paul suburbs. So you guys are very adventuresome. Yeah, it's really my husband. I'm very <laughs> conservative. I'm not really a risk taker. I, a lot of the mm -hmm. things that I have done in my life have been because I've been forced to do that. Like I would have yeah, never yeah. in a million years quit my very lucrative full-time job as a retail manager to like make cakes out of my kitchen with three small babies and diapers. But I, <laughs> I ended up losing my job. I was forced into that. Oh. And so, so you just thought, oh, well, what am I going to do now? Let's try this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I thought, you know, this will be a way to make a little bit of money while I try and figure out what I'm going to do. And I mean, it was going to cost me more money to put my three infants in daycare than it was for me to go back to work. So we yeah. were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But my husband is the one that always has these crazy ideas. And he's actually very analytical, though. So even mm -hmm. though the ideas seem crazy, there's a lot of thought that he puts behind yeah. them. And he's usually right. I think I'm I think we're married to the same man. <laughs> Is this possible? <laughs> One time we ran, we ran a Tough Mudder and we, we ended up like jogging next to some random girl. And then by the end, he was like, yeah, so we're taking her out to dinner. And I'm like, what? I just want to go home. I don't know these people. I'm like covered in mud. I'm done peopling. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I'm done for the day. Uh -huh. Like I've, I've seen enough strangers. You take day. her out to dinner. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's very, very extroverted. It's so interesting that your story about moving to Minnesota, because we're from Reno, Nevada. We moved to rural Montana a year and a half ago. We basically came here for vacation, bought a home, went home, packed up our stuff and moved here. And then all 11 of our extended family members ended up by the time we actually moved here coming to. So it's and it was all because my husband was analyzing where we needed to live to be safe for the kids and to have sort of the environment that we wanted. And we were living in an urban setting and it was just too much. And, and he'd always loved to fly fish and always kind of dreamt in Montana. But he looked at politics of the area, the finances of the area and the natural resources and kind of narrowed it down to a few locations. We got in our camper and went on a two week vacation and ended up buying 
this place, which we're, we were just going on a fact finding mission. And we're like, when are we going to find this again? This is crazy. It's the perfect 20 acres with live water running through it. Oh, wow. We thought it would take forever to find something like that that checked all the boxes that we could afford. And when we found it, we're like, we have to snatch it up. And even the kids, our girls were teenagers at the time. They called this place favorite. What What if somebody buys favorite? And we're like, you guys, we're just here <laughs> trying to figure out what town we want to be near. And I mean, the four of us just, we went for it, but it's because number one, my husband's super spontaneous and number two, he's super analytical. So the spontaneity has this like a base of sense, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's very much my husband. So it's so crazy. We're here. We love it. And actually a couple of people have migrated here as well because we are here. (gasps) Really? Yeah. For like exactly the same reason. So that's so funny that you say that. Everything fell into place so beautifully. I mean, not to say it wasn't hard because I think that was one of the hardest years of my life just because there was so much transition. We lived in our camper for four months. Oh, God. While the house was being finished. Oh, with We have two kids, two cats, and a dog. Sometimes it all comes together and you just have to be brave, you know? Yeah, that's a lot of togetherness. I'm like still thinking about the camper. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. My poor girls. My youngest started eighth grade and my oldest started ninth grade out of a 20 foot camper trailer. Oh, jeez. Yeah. They'd be like, this is so hard. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we have to go get ready for our first day of high school in this camper. And I'm like, you guys, you have to remember that you have it better in this camper than 99% of the inhabitants of this planet. So buck up. And then I'd, I'd look at my husband and be like, yeah, but this sucks. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's just like, they have a point. So tell me the age of your kids again. So I've got a 12-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 15-year-old. And they're so close in age that for one month every year, they're all just one year apart. So when my Mm 12-year-old turns 13 in November, it'll be a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a (laughs) 15-year-old. And they're all girls? Yeah, they're all girls. I highly do not recommend having children this close in age. I didn't do it on purpose. (laughs) I I was down for the first two and the third one was a complete surprise. And I think it like broke me. I was so exhausted. Oh, yeah. They've never known anything else other than Nadia Cakes and the bakery. And I'm super grateful that they get to have that kind of life. Yeah. As you know, the point of this podcast is for us to share our most embarrassing moments so that the listeners don't feel so alone, so we can all laugh at ourselves together. And it brings together people and connects people and makes us all feel like imperfection isn't such a dirty word and and it's fun. So anyway, what are your not so fancy moments that you have to share with us? We had a cake. It was a geode cake that we posted for sale. So a geode is, uh, you know, like that sparkly rock, that colorful sparkly rock. It's purple sometimes. It comes in a lot of different colors. Okay. So it'll be like neutral and rockish on the outside. And then when you crack it open, there's this like gorgeous, sparkly, crystallized type colorful interior. Yeah. Geodes were super hot back in 2018. And so we wanted to do a, <laughs> a geode cake workshop. So one of my cake decorators made this display cake so we could take a picture of it and then post the workshop. And then he needed to sell it because he was done with his photo. So he sent it to me and I posted it. And almost immediately, people were like, uh, that kind of looks like a vagina. <laughs> and it looked like a vagina. And I'm here to tell you, okay, like I I am not prudish in any way, shape or form, but I looked that cake right in the crotch and I did not see a vagina when I looked at it. It looked like a geo to me. Um, and I, I didn't see it. And it, truth be told, we are a family run business. You know, we're a little edgy, you know, we're funny. We got cute little funny quotes on our delivery truck and stuff, but we're not like, you know, vagina cake edgy. We don't actually do X-rated cake. Your, your audience not the bachelorette parties, et cetera. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. We're very, you know, we don't really do that stuff. And so, but I had just started my own social media page about three months earlier. And of course I'm writing these like, you know, really witty, like, you know, snarky romance novels now. And I was like, well, a little bit of fun with this. I just, so I started to engage as the admin for Nadia Cakes. It looks like it's Nadia Cakes commenting. And I just started kind (laughs) of like clicking back and forth with these people. And it actually started kind of slow. It took a few days for it to take off. And I remember I was at dinner with one of my friends and I was like, oh my gosh, this like post with this cake where I'm, you know, comment, I'm bantering back and forth with people and like making fun of this cake. It's got like a, like 500 shares. That's crazy. And now it's been shared like 
hundreds of thousands of times. I mean, it's <laughs> wow. it went all it went bonkers. Yeah, she goes, "Wouldn't that be crazy if you woke up the next morning and it was at a thousand, you know? And then the next morning it was at like eight hundred, and then it was at fifteen hundred, and then all of a sudden it went cr- like it exploded. It went everywhere. Wow. I was getting like people in Australia." We're like, I am a social media manager and I want to talk to my team about how you did this. Like people were asking me to do Hmm. video conference calls for their group. I was getting interview requests from the UK. Like it was insane. They were writing articles about it in German. It was on like (laughs) Cosmopolitan.com. It was on Bravo. It was on Life of Dad. It was like everywhere. Oh my gosh. It was good community management is what it was. You know, and if you look at that post, you can find it. It's pinned at the top of the Nadia Cakes page, which Nadia Cakes got over 100,000 new followers on Facebook from that one thing. Wow. And one of the things that you'll notice is as I am having fun, I am also selling product. Mm. I'm letting people know that this cake is available. I'm letting people know that we ship. I'm letting people know, like you can see through the comments, I'm working that in. It was considered a very successful social media campaign and it was completely unintentional. (laughs) You would think because it was kind of racy, you know, there'd be like people pearl clutching. Pearl clutching. (laughs) There were a a very few, you know, they were like, I'll never go back to Nadia Cakes. This is so vulgar. But it was, for the most part, it was very, very, very well received. Extremely well received. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it wasn't intentional. And then it's like, yeah, let's laugh at life, guys. Like we all have body parts and sometimes things look like body parts and I'm sorry, that's funny. <laughs> you know, like yeah, people can tell, you can tell if you're not being authentic on the internet. And it was just a very organic, very natural situation that that happened. And I had a ton of, I have never had so much fun in my life. Oh, I'm just going to tell you that went on for like a month. It was just crazy for a month. It was everywhere. How fun. Yeah. So I got a lot of my social media followers because of that. And Nadia Cakes is still very family friendly. My social media is a little more edgy. I am a little more edgy than my brand. (laughs) That's okay. And then the X-Lax thing. So that I am just now getting to the place where I can talk about this without laughing to tears. So what happened was my husband took X-Lax. He read the box and it said, take one one to two swears. Well, he had, when he opened up the little tinfoil wrapper, he had the chocolate upside down. So it looked like this brick of chocolate was one big square. Okay. Well, when you flip it over, it's actually 12 pieces of chocolate. Okay. So he opened this thing up and, and, you know, the directions say eat one to two squares. So he opens it up. He sees this giant square. He eats one thinking, I'm just going to try a half (laughs) dose. So... <laughs> and he's like, my jaw is exhausted. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, he said it tasted so terrible. And he was like, oh, this is awful. And he's like, I'm just going to do a half dose so I don't take too much. And then the next day, all of a sudden, his stomach starts to hurt really badly. And, and he looks at the box, and I swear I'll never forget. It's you know where you like how you remember where you were when something really yes. big happened. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, I will never forget where he was standing and where I was sitting when I learned the news that he had eaten an entire break of X Lax. And he was like, Abby, something's wrong. He's like, something is really wrong. And he picked the box and he read it, and he's like, Oh my god. <laughs> I ate a whole and I, I I just started to die. I laughed so hard. And I think like in my own defense, okay, like, all right, I'm going to go to hell. Okay. My husband was really scared. <laughs> he thought he, he was going to die. He, his stomach really hurt. But I think inside, like some consciously, I knew that people used x lax for pranks, right? Oh, like, yeah. In my yeah. mind, I know everybody, you know, has heard, you know, oh, a coworker always steals my lunch. So I slipped x lax in my yogurt or whatever, right? Like this stuff can't be too toxic. Right. He's not going to die, you know? Yeah. He runs to the bathroom. He's on the toilet. <laughs> and he's like, you need to call poison control. <laughs> he's, he's like, I think I'm dying. Oh, God. <laughs> he, said, he said it felt like the inside of, the inside of his stomach was coming out. <laughs> So I so I call poison control and I'm not even like mind you this is this has been months okay like I'm still laughing this hard and it's been months all right so like you just picture me on the phone poison control and my husband is so mad and he's like Abby I'm serious this is serious I think you 
take me to the hospital. And I'm barely coherent. Like I'm on the phone with poison control and I am like laughing so hard, but I'm trying really hard not to laugh because my husband is pissed off at me because I'm laughing so hard. It's Minnesota, right? You know, and and, and I, I don't know if there's like some exchange, like where it automatically directs to like a Minnesota poison control person. Like, I don't know how this works, but yeah. the guy had a Minnesota accent and he was like, oh boy. <laughs> oh yeah. So you're going to want to get some desitin. <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> just like dying. <laughs> Ah. So he was like, I'm like laughing so hard. And this guy must get this phone call like 27 times a day or something because he's just dead ass. Like, he wasn't okay. laughing. How? Yeah. I thought he was going to hang up. Whatever he has, we need to bottle it up and put it in the pocket of every high schooler. Did you have this problem when I was in high school? Something would tickle my funny bone, and then I'd be like, <laughs> not stop laughing like right in the middle of class and I'm like I'm so inappropriate I hate myself yeah. so much and I'm just like laughing 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 <sighs> that is 100% what happened <laughs> to me and I'm not really the kind of person who loses it like this you seem very level-headed <laughs> in general and the guy was like how old is your husband and I'm like he's 39 <laughs> and I'm like laughing like he's old enough to know better. Like what the hell? Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. So he, basically, in case you don't know, like what the you know what the diagnosis is, if you've consumed this much X, he took twelve doses of Xlax. Okay. Basically, dehydration is one of the biggest side effects, and diaper rash. It really, it really is the diaper. Oh, it, diaper rash. And and the guy was like, "So you're gonna want to get some desitin with like this." Minnesota accent. And I freaking, de- I say in my post, I was not ready for this dude to come at me with desitin. I completely lost it. Like with diaper rash. You're like, I'm trying to hold it together. And you come at me with desitin for my husband. Oh my gosh. My biggest regret is that I did not turn a camera yes. on myself and like record this phone call because I was laughing so freaking hard <laughs> tears running down my face and my husband's like this isn't funny from the other room he's like i think you have to take me to the hospital and I'm like, <laughs> wait i have a burning question okay you know how 911 calls are recorded are poison control calls recorded maybe a recording exists i think they are recorded you've got to find out and i actually tried <sighs> to get access to it but by the time i tried it had already been like a week or something and i don't know how long they keep them dang it or even if they're public record, or I can't even imagine this guy didn't share this with coworkers. Yes. I was laughing so hard. And my husband is very private. He does not like me posting his name on social media. He never lets me post pictures of himself. He's extremely, extremely private. Except with the stranger at the Tough Mudder. He's going to go ahead and take her right out to dinner. This is exactly what my husband's like. He doesn't have a Facebook page. He doesn't want anything on the internet about himself, but he's never met a stranger. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is my husband. I can't believe you let me share this story. Honestly, I cannot believe he let me share. And I was like, please let me share this. Please. So (laughs) So I wrote it out exactly like, you know, as it happened and it went just completely, it went more viral than the the video thing. It was everywhere. It was just everywhere. (laughs) If, you know, in case you haven't read the post, it's pinned to the top of my Facebook page, author Abby Jimenez. And the post has been seen 39 million times. Oh my God. (laughs) 39 million times? In August. And to this day, I still get comments on that post every day, all day long. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you have done it. You have made me laugh so hard that my nose is now running. You're the second person that I've had to blow my nose in the middle of an interview. The first one was Sandra Samoska's episode when she talked about her dogs getting stuck to each other through the doggy door. Oh my God, no. <laughs> you you have to listen to it. It's so, oh, so so funny. We were both laughing so hard. I, I couldn't breathe. I was like, well, there's my workout for the day. Done, <laughs> done. Episode 22. Like I already worked out this morning. Now I don't even have to work out tomorrow. Perfect. Whew. Glad I could help. I'm almost out of breath. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Abby, those stories are so incredible. So that is kind of an embarrassing moment for you too, because you were not holding it together well with the, <laughs> with the poison control officer. <laughs> no, I was absolutely not. Uh, it, it, that was probably the favorite thing that has ever happened to my husband. And that's really sad, oh but it, it brought me so much joy. <laughs> it is sad. It's, that's what he's going to be known for. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, Lord. I can't wait to tell my husband. I can't wait. <laughs> he doesn't listen to my show, but I think I'm going to make him listen to this episode because I can't tell it like you told it. Do you have a quick life hack you use that you think the listeners would love? Okay, so I am a huge chef. I absolutely love to cook. And whenever I cook, I always cook twice as much as I need so that I can Mm. freeze one for meals later during the holidays. So I'll prep all of my sides for Thanksgiving a week or two before Thanksgiving. So I'm not like chaotic the day of. So I'll make Mm. my mashed potatoes. I'll make, you know, the green bean casserole. I'll make all of those sides. And I make enough that I can freeze half of it for Christmas. Oh my gosh. Because it's all the same size. Yeah. And that stuff all freezes well, because I have a famous roasted garlic make ahead mashed potato recipe and I make it in the morning and then I put it in my crock pot and it's perfect at dinner. Then you're not sweating all over your hair, do you right over the stove right before, you know, right as dinner is being served. Yep. But I, I don't know if I've ever frozen mashed potatoes. Oh my gosh, changing my life here. So here's what happens when you thaw mashed potatoes. You can put it in your slow cooker frozen, like a little brick, just drop it in there Mm. and then turn it on high. And it's going to be really watery at first. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what have I done? We're not going to have mashed potatoes. And you just keep stirring, (laughs) stirring, 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 and it all comes back together and it's completely normal again. Wow. I'll use disposable tins so I'm not scrubbing casserole dishes on the day. Brilliant. And I will just wrap them all up. I'll put Christmas on one and I'll put Thanksgiving on the other one. And I'm super chill the whole holiday because I have everything already done. And then all I have to make on the day of is the punch and the turkey or whatever. The meat. Yeah. Which my husband does. Yeah. Wow. So that's my life hack. I Love it. I wrote an article about, I think it's 15 tips to make entertaining more doable for introverts and newbies. Because I've had to do a lot of entertaining, even though, I mean, I'd rather have my teeth pulled, honestly, than have a big group of people over. I like a small group. Like if you fit around my dining room table, I'm happy as a little clam. But I can't multitask when I'm visiting because it takes all of my energy to socialize. And so I have to do everything ahead. So anything that's stovetop or has to be made at the last minute is my husband's job. And everything that can be prepped ahead of time, I'll do it and I'll have the legwork for that. But you have taken that advice to the next level and I love it. That could go for any time. Yeah, it's great. If you're having a dinner party and you're having guests over and you are cooking this fabulous thing, why not just cook twice as much of it and freeze Mm -hmm. it? And then the next time you run into friends and you decide to get together for dinner, you can wow them with your masterpiece right out of the freezer. That's what I do every time because you're already doing all the prep work. You're already making the thing. It's not that much more work to just make more of the thing. Totally. What have you been loving lately that you think the listeners might love too? Okay. The last thing that I absolutely binged on and could not stop was The Dutch House by, I might say her name wrong, Anne Patchett, the audiobook. It was narrated by Tom Hanks. Oh, you're kidding. No. I love him. I had no idea what her book was about, but I love Tom Hanks. And so I was like, this will probably be fabulous, you know, with him narrating it. And if you liked The Goldfinch, it's kind of like that same fiction type of genre. And I just absolutely adored that book. I could not put it down. Tell us the title of your first book. When it came out, tell us the title of your second book, when it's coming out, and then we can go from there. Okay, but if I tell you, it's going to be spoilers for The Friend Zone. That's okay. Okay. My first book is The Friend Zone, and that came out in June of 2019. That is about Kristen Peterson. She is struggling with severe uterine fibroids. And I actually based the infertility struggle in that book on my best friend's real life struggle with infertility. So even Mm -hmm. though the romance in the book is complete fiction, the infertility struggle is almost word for word all the way up through to the end, exactly what happened to my best friend. My best friend had a partial hysterectomy at the age of 28 (gasps) and took her uterus. And then uh, about a year later, they took her ovaries as well due to the same condition. So by 29, she had a full hysterectomy. Wow. She really went through it. She definitely did. So a lot of people say that feels very authentic in the book. And that's because that was word for word as she described it to me. And then the second book is the Happy Ever After playlist that comes out on April 14th. And that book is about a young woman who is struggling with complicated grief. Two years earlier, she lost her fiance to a fatal motorcycle accident, and she's still not her normal self. And she finds this dog who jumps on her through her sunroof. (laughs) 
<laughs> and she spends the next two weeks trying to find the dog's owner. She, he won't call her back. She can't get him on the phone. And finally, she decides to keep the dog. And when the guy shows up, he is a famous recording artist. And he does not mm-hmm. tell her who he is. And they spend several weeks getting to know each other on the phone. She's dog sitting his dog until he gets back from his overseas tour. And that's the story of that. Wow. Oh, you're so creative. So do you have a little excerpt that you'd be willing to read to the listeners? Yes. Each chapter in the Happy Ever After playlist leads with a song that is appropriate for that chapter in tone, title, and lyrics. And you can actually access this playlist as you're reading. It's on Spotify and on Apple Music so that you don't have to go searching for the songs. So this is chapter six, and this is Sloan. And the song on the the playlist is Future by Paramore. And just a little backstory, Sloan has just met Jason, which is the dog's owner. Tucker is the dog. And she's kind of been chatting with him back and forth on the phone. And her best friend has just knocked on her front door. I must have looked guilty when I hung up with Jason so quickly because Kristen eyed me suspiciously as she let herself into my house. Who was that? She dropped a bag from in and out of my coffee table, flopped onto the sofa beside me and ruffled Tucker's fur. I debated lying to her. I don't know why. Maybe because Jason was a man and he wasn't branded and that made me feel guilty, but she'd see it on my face if I lied. She always saw through me. That was Jason, Tucker's owner. Her eyebrows went up. I shrugged. It's nothing. He's taking Tucker back. Her gaze soft, and he is. I'm sorry, Sloan. I know you really got attached to him. She dipped her head to look me in the eye. Now quit effing with me and tell me what's really going on. My eyes narrowed. I don't know why I bothered trying to keep things from you. I don't know why you bother either. I let out a breath through my nose. We've kind of been talking. Talking? She grinned. Yes, texting and on the phone. Then I scoffed and wait until you see this. I grabbed my phone and went to the pictures Jason had sent me of him and Tucker. I handed it over to her and waited as she looked at them. Her eyes flew wide. This is Jason. That is Jason. And he's nice and funny and really, really flirty. And he has a great dog, she said. Yes. And he has a great dog. Is he single? Yes. Is he asking you things like whether or not you're single, she asked? Yes. She beamed. Have you met him? Then she looked over at Tucker. Why is his dog still here? He's in Australia for work for a few more weeks. I'm keeping Tucker for him until he gets back. My phone pinged and I glanced at it. It was Jason. My eyes shut up to Kristen and she arched an eyebrow. Is that him? She asked, smiling like the Cheshire cat. Is it a dick pic? Is it amazing? No, it is not a dick pic. Ew. If he ever sent me one of those, his little back and forth would come to an abrupt end. He wants to know if the huntsman's wife is my blog. Her eyes lit up. Are you posting again? No, it's a long story how that came up. I pursed my lips. Why do I feel guilty about this? Because you haven't dated since Brandon? Because you're like a hermit? You remind me of those veiled Italian widows from the old world wearing black and lighting Virgin Mary candles, shuffling around their rosaries and I hit her with a throw pillow and she laughed. Seriously, Sloan, you're a hot bombshell. You're beautiful and talented and you deserve to be happy again. This recluse stuff is BS. Wow, tell me how you really feel. No, I mean it, Sloan. Josh and I talked about this a few days ago. We're staging an intervention. We decided that once the two-year mark hit, we weren't going to let you continue to make your life a shrine to Brandon. Enough is enough. I looked at her tiredly. I don't choose to feel like this, Kristen. Like hell you don't. Used to be one of the most driven people I know. You had galleries fighting over your work. She looked around the living room, and when her eyes fell on my most recent commissioned artwork, she turned to me accusatorily. This is the shit I'm talking about. What is that? A freaking astronaut cat? I had the sense to look abashed. You're a crazy, talented artist. Look at the crap you're painting. You choose this. I sighed. She was right. She was right about all of it. Do stuff that makes you happy. Why don't you paint something you like? Paint Tucker. She shook her head, and that guy should climb him like a tree, or at the very least, shake his branches, see what kind of nuts fall out. <laughs> I love it. I cleaned it up for you. There was a lot of f bombs in there. That I oh, know. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you an awesome baker and an awesome writer, but girl, you are you. I mean, reading out loud is like a skill of its own. You you've got skills. You got skills coming out the yin yang. Oh well, thank you. I always feel like I saw this. <laughs> actually I have my Invisalign and I forgot to take them out. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, that's all right. It is what it is. <laughs> You're going to have straight teeth to boot pretty soon. That's crazy. Abby, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for spending this much time with me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This was probably one of my favorite podcast recordings. Oh, well, thank you. I'm honored to hear that. It's a lot of fun for me. I know that all the listeners are going to be tripping over themselves to find more Abby Jimenez. So please tell us where we can find you in all your places. On Twitter, it's author Abby Jim. And then on Facebook and Instagram, my handle is author Abby Jimenez. Very easy to find. 
And I post all of the things in those places. And then uh, you can also check out my book tour links on my website, which is author Abby Jimenez. Okay. I will link to all of those things. Are you doing like a book club type discussion after it comes out on your Facebook page? Or do you have anything like that planned? I do actually have a discussion group. It's called the Friend Zone Discussion Group, and that's on my Facebook page. And there's going to be a little side group that is specifically for the Happy Ever After playlist where we will discuss the book and there'll be no spoilers in the Friend Zone group. So join the Friend Zone group. I will direct you guys to the Happy Ever After playlist group from there if, if you want to have some Happy Ever After playlist discussion in a spoiler approved venue. It's it's really fun. I do a lot of exclusive giveaways for my followers in the group. So definitely a good place to be if you like my writing and want access to advanced copies of my books and things like that. Awesome. I will be there and I will definitely link to that first Facebook group so that my listeners can check it out as well. Thank you so much for listening to the Fancy Free Podcast. Wasn't Abby amazing? Oh my gosh, I could have talked to her all day. I just think she's so creative and so witty and has such interesting experiences. And I just love her take on life. Make sure you check out the show notes for today's episode at fancyfreepodcast.com to get all the links we discussed today so that you can check out Abby's Twitter account and her Facebook page and look into joining her Facebook group. And of course, you're going to want to see the picture of the Vigio cake, and I will link you to the written version of her her ex-lax story, which had me rolling. And then, of course, also in the show notes, I will link to Nadia Cakes and to Abby's books. Next week on the show, we have Matana Jacobs, who has a funny story about putting her foot in her mouth. And Matana is an amazing person. She has a podcast about her struggle with depression and anxiety. And she's just really open about that. And she's just in such a good place. And she has such a heart for helping people that had similar struggles. So I really think you're going to love her episode. So make sure you come back next week to hear that. Remember to subscribe to the show so that new episodes pop into your feed each week. When Abby and I were talking about entertaining, I mentioned an article that might help you if you find entertaining stressful. It's called 15 Tricks to Make Entertaining Less Stressful for Introverts and Newbies. I will also link to that in the show notes. If you have a funny story to tell, please email me at notfancy at fancyfreepodcast.com. You don't have to be polished or a public speaker or anything like that. I'll help you tell your story. If you have a story to tell, I would love to do that. And if you want more connection and laughter and sharing with your fellow Fancy Free listeners, then join the Fancy Free Facebook group. It's so much fun. We talk all about our embarrassing stories in our safe little corner of the internet there. We laugh at ourselves together and we just have so much fun. We answer a question of the week each week. The question this week is, have you ever had to call poison control? As a physician, I'm embarrassed to admit to you that I have called poison control on more than one occasion. The second occasion I had forgotten about and my kids last night reminded me as they were squirting whipped cream on their dessert. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of why I called. My husband was like, what? You did that? I'm like, I don't know. It was scary. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I would love it if you would follow the Fancy Free Podcast on Instagram and tell at least one friend about the show this week. And if she doesn't know how to listen to podcasts, show her because it'll change your life. Podcasts are one of my favorite things in life right now. They just make mundane tasks and exercising and commuting so much more either entertaining or informative or whatever you're in the mood for. Have a great week. And remember, no one is as fancy as they look. Thanks again for listening to Comedy by Indie Drop-In. If you would like your show featured, reach out to us at Indie Drop-In on all social media or go to IndieDropIn.com. See you next time.